The point of this video is to get a tour of the code base so that we're all on the same page. We all sort of know what's going on in these folders and these files that have come with the uh, repository that everyone has cloned. So every Next.js application, the whole routing system and sort of the key place where everything starts happens in the pages folder. And in this, we've got a number of pages that I've pre-created that are basically empty, but just so that all of the imports are handled already. So here we've got the home page, the index. Um, these are all of the imports we will eventually have, but uh, right now they're just commented out and we've got a very small component that's just exporting a div with the word home in it. So at this point we could, we could start our app. So we could say uh, yarn dev and that will launch things on localhost 3000. So we can command click that and open that up. And you should basically get a dark screen. Um, okay, not a dark screen, a, a light screen. So it just says the word home and um, things are going well so far. So a few of the other pages we have are the auth page. This is where the, the sign in will be, the, the sign up and sign in. And we'll skip underscore app for a second and we'll go into houses. So it's just a subfolder where we can add a house and then um, a dynamic route with these square parentheses here for I, the house ID, where we can view a house or show a house and where we'll be building the edit house functionality. API, so this is all the backend stuff in Next.js. Uh, we're going to be only working with one endpoint and that's because in GraphQL, you have a single endpoint that handles all of the queries and mutations. So here's where, we, where we'll be building this out. So the one we didn't cover is this underscore app.tsx. So this is a component in Next.js that can basically wrap itself around every other page. So this component that is being received here as a prop and is just being returned basically represents each page of this application. So if we were to go to, um, let's say slash auth, slash, um, what was the other one? Houses add. So all of these pages are being rendered within this, um, this app. And the reason you would want this is because we're going to have some providers, things that we want globally wrapping around every page of our application, such as our Apollo client, such as our auth provider that we can place in this part here. So public, this is where you can just put sort of things you want in your GitHub repository. But um, so I've got in here the favicon and stuff like that. Images. Source is where we're going to be doing all of the non-page level work. So we've got some different things we're going to be using for auth. We've got components. These are sort of smallable, reusable components that we'll be using throughout our application. Things such as the map or the layout of our application. Schema, this is where we're going to be building out all of the GraphQL functionality, all of the different resolvers and mutations and queries. Utils, here we're going to be building a couple custom hooks that are used. Um, one to remember where the map was and we've moved around and one to stop some flashing that happens as it's requerying the houses. And then we've got our Apollo um, client that we'll set up and our Prisma client that we'll set up for a connection to our database. So that's the source folder. Styles, we don't have much going on. It's very basically the base Tailwind setup. So it's importing the Tailwind base. Um, and then I've set up a couple things here. So body, um, background color, input, and um, marker active. So the reason it wasn't black, uh, which I thought it was going to be, is because if you were to go into pages, app, I'm not importing any of the styles at all. So if I were to import those styles, refresh, the page should be black because now it's including all of Tailwind and that one style that I have. There we go. It's not black, it's like a, a nice dark blue color. But uh, we'll just leave this commented out for now. So once we get down past styles, uh, this is where we get into all of the config setup. And I didn't want to do this as a video because it's very tedious and frankly, I 
just copied and pasted it from other examples around the internet. And, um, but I wanted to cover what they do. So Babel is basically what takes our code and it goes from sort of TypeScript to what ends up on the internet. And this requires a couple different plugins that you don't normally need when you're just doing Next.js. And that is because we're using um, some things around decorators with type GraphQL. So we go to type GraphQL and you look at their sort of base example. They've got this at object type um, and then calling it wrapping around the, the class and then at field wrapping around this. So these are decorating the things below them and decorators don't sort of work out of the box in JavaScript. So I had to add some different things for type GraphQL to work. Um, transform TypeScript metadata. This is required. I'm not quite sure what, but they require it. Um, decorators that I just showed. Um, class properties. So these are in a class properties right here. And then plugin parameter decorator. So these are the plugins required for basically the type GraphQL to work. So these would have been added to our package.json as uh, dev dependencies, these different plugins here. So you don't have to worry too much about them. They're there, we'll use them, but uh, that's it. So prettier, don't have anything here. This was just set up when um, Next.js was converted to TypeScript. So we're not going to touch this at all. Package.json. So I've already um, installed all of the dependencies. And the reason I did that is because I wanted everyone to be on the exact same version. Because as this course is launching, um, different packages are launching new versions and that might make the course not work. For example, Prisma has just put out an update that changes the way they do migrations. It's great, but as they release new things, it basically means you everyone would be getting weird errors in the course. So I wanted to lock it in. I've also set up a few different scripts for things like uh, code generation and TypeScript and GraphQL that we're going to be running. And then all of the different um, dependencies here. So we're doing um, Tailwind in this course and Tailwind basically gives you probably thousands of these classes you can add to your code to, to avoid writing CSS. A utility first CSS framework, but that gives you a massive CSS file. And if you've only used a hundred of those CSS selectors and you've got a thousand that you're not using, you're creating a really large CSS file that um, that's just going to slow your site down. So with post CSS and um, it does the tailwind work, but then it does different things about like purging unused um, selectors and whatnot. I haven't really changed anything here. I've just copied and pasted the recommended Next.js setup for Tailwind. The last one, uh, Tailwind, I didn't change anything other than where to look to purge files. So I'm just purging in two places, the pages directory where all of our page level components go and the source um, directory where all of the rest of our code goes. So those are the two places that Tailwind will look to purge unused classes to make a, a smaller final CSS build. This course uses TypeScript and um, Next.js comes with really good TypeScript support out of the box. So I've basically used exactly what they give me, but I changed three things. So I added in this base URL and what this allows you to do is to, to not have to use relative, um, relative folder um, paths when you're loading things. For example, in auth, I can just say SRC components. I don't have to say dot, dot, slash, all that stuff. So that's what the uh, base URL does. We need to emit decorator metadata. This is something for type GraphQL along with experimental decorators. And one other thing I've done is I've turned on strict mode true. So this doesn't allow you to just have any default any types. It basically wants a type on every single function, every variable, etc. And I wanted strict two to, to make us write high quality TypeScript code. So those are the different files um, and the different tweaks that I've done. Not many. I wanted to 
to keep them as sort of bare bones as possible because that's not really the point of this course. The point is to understand front end and back end development and to build a full application. And these are just things we need in place to be able to use Tailwind and TypeScript and things like that. So we didn't touch anything in this video at all, but this is how it's laid out, the folder structure. So take a look, explore them, um, explore the different imports if you want, but these are all stuff that we're going to be covering in later videos within this course. All right, let's get to actual coding in the next video.